minus 1 without the colon. Putting that in the outer column, this equals 205 minus 1. Let's do some fancy indentations for the subcalculation. Selecting these three, home tab, uh, alignment, indent, and then I double indent in here. Home tab, alignment, and indent again. So that's our standard subcalculation colon representing there's going to be a subcalculation. We pulled that into the center column and then we indented. And then when we finished the calculation to get to what we had with the subtitle, we put it on the outside. So now we have the numerator and the denominator and the outer column, which is a standard tax return kind of format, which may kind of turn you off with the tax return format. But it's actually a good, a good, like, strategy or format when you're trying to work through practice problems, even though taxes are uh, not enjoyable for most people. So this is going to be the R or uh, correlation. Maybe I should have put the R up first here. R correlation. And so we just divide that out because we got the numerator and the denominator, home tab, font group, underline. And let's just divide it out. Obviously, 204 divided by the 204 is 1, but now it's negative 1, which means now it's perfectly negative cor negatively correlated. And so that's what we would have, that's what we expect. So I was like, okay, perfect negative correlation. That makes sense. Now let's do that same thing with the with the with with excel just telling us it's, it's negatively correlated so to do that i can go to the ins to the data to the analysis now if you don't have that analysis tool remember you just go to the file tab you go to the options you go to the add-ins you have the excel add-ins go to that and then add the analysis tool pack the super cool pack of tool so then here we are and if you don't have if you don't have the tool pack you are a tool i don't even know what I, anyways correlation here's the correlation we're going to say okay and we'll find this one and let's put this down and we'll say we're just going to take these two i'm going to i'm going to take the headers in control shift down in our data so we're, we're going to we have to have them side by the side you can see I'm going to say backspace. I think I've got the right data, so it's still summing that up. Yes. All right. And then I'm going to say, OK. And then labels checked off, because I had the labels in there. So you have to have that if you included the labels when you summed it up or, or drew the location of where the thing is. OK. That wasn't very well said, but I will leave it in. OK. And then where the thing is when you did the other thing. Let's put it here and say, OK, and then OK. So there we have it. So then it tells us it's perfectly negative correlated. I'll format this. Let's make some uh, black and white home tab font group black, white. Let's uh, center it uh, and wrap the text. OK, so that looks good. And then, of course, I'm just going to do that last analysis tool let's put let's pull this underneath now so we have room for our charts can nice go there nice and cozy like underneath so they're they're like not too far away from everything else and they feel like they're part they're part of everything that's going on you know they're not like out in the distance in the cold let's also then do the other data analysis data analysis and do that uh description descriptive statistics just to practice with that because it's a cool tool it's a cool tool let's go same thing same set of data selecting the data and then i'm going to say where do we want to put it i'll tell you where to put it excel you put it right there that's where you put it that's where it goes that's why you put it there summary statistics and then i'll do the confidence intervals although we're not going to focus in on them now I'll say okay so then and then let's make this a little wider boom and it gives you the the mean the standard error the median the mode standard deviation and that of course can give you some uh, indications about the relationships between the data sets 
but remember that this is kind of static data so it does it's not dynamic so if you're you know you can't change it as easily so it's any case let's do let's just format our stuff now like we normally do i'm going to go all the way back to the beginning control shift down i'm going to make this blue home tab font group make it uh, border blue if you don't have that blue by the way it's in the more color you don't have to do this blue by the way it's that blue right there you can color it whatever color you think is fine home tab font group i like the blue i've grown up with the blue the blue has has in i find it it has endeared my heart and i uh so i stick with it home tab border blue but that's just me you know you can do whatever you want i do enjoy other colors as well home tab font group blue borders and then let's do this one i tend to like to use the other colors for other standardized areas see and so i have it all worked out in my my logic system in my mind which isn't always that logical it has a it has this plan of which colors are supposed to be where and uh uh that's just so i just that's why but you don't have to follow that and here we go and then this one home tab font group and black and white color coding is not my strong suit it's not my strong suit that's why i use the same colors because then i don't have to think about it let's put some borders around that let's do a spell check on it if we would check the spelling correlation i can't i can't spell that word i can't spell it it's a hard word to spell that's why you have spell check though so that's cool no worries all right 